Every week we release our messages in two different ways. There's a message only version, which is what this is, or you can watch the music prayer and message version if you click on this button. Today's message, I think, is really going to bless you as we talk about breaking strongholds and becoming free in our lives. Well, hello, everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, today I want to talk about the power of God to overcome the difficulties we have in our lives. The power of God to overcome the difficulties that we have in our lives. I meet many Christians today who stop and think that life is just about living with the problems that we have. And whilst we all have problems in life and there's no guarantees in the scriptures that problems would be lifted from us, many people are subject to them in terms of they rob them of joy. They rob them of the peace in their life. The promise of Jesus is that He would be with us in the midst of our lives with all of the challenges and with all of the joys of life. We are promised that God is with us. There are some issues of life that can be overcome and some issues that God can grace us with the ability to live with. Well, I've been doing this job for such a long time now that I feel that I have read thousands of emails, talked to countless numbers of people, read letters of people who tell me of the difficulties and the struggles that they have in life. I I don't think it uh, matters who you are. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you're powerful or weak, whether you are someone who is known and famous or you're someone in private. We all have in our lives challenges. We know that, that God uses sometimes the challenges and the struggles of life to touch us and to change us. Rosemary and I often talk about some of the challenges that we faced in life. And whilst we wouldn't choose them, Rosemary and I recently had a conversation where we said to to ourselves, you know, we wouldn't be the people that we are today if it was not for what we have endured, if it was not for what we have gone through. And as I say, it's not that you choose the difficult, but God often uses the difficult to draw us closer to Him. See, After a while, when you've read as many letters and if you've read as many uh, notes and emails and talk with as many people, you become a little bit unshockable, to be honest, Uh, because what what you've heard is, is you begin to hear the same thing in time over and over again. People begin to tell you the same kinds of things. And whilst most people want to be unique and we all want to be individual and we don't want our circumstance to be what anybody else's circumstance is, the truth is... Humanity is so much the same and we begin to hear the same, the same stories. Human beings, however, I've discovered when you spend time with them and we all do it, certainly I do it, we have a way of putting on a, a face, a, a presentation face or what I call game face. We, we leave our homes and we get ourselves ready and we, and we go out into the world. And most of the time, we don't tell all everybody what our problems was. Most of the time, we don't tell people what our struggles are. But behind the game face, behind the mask we put on, there is a life. And there are so many people who are struggling with circumstances, some of which can be overcome that God desires to lift from us if we will allow Him to do so in our life. Um, I, uh, when I record, one of the things that, uh, when I first started doing television, to be honest, uh, I was only doing it in a low key way. I never used to worry about doing makeup or anything else like that. I would just turn up and I would record. But when our television programs launched into the United States in particular, the American uh, television producers would say to me, what are we going to do about your face? Uh, I I know, well, this is the one I've got. I can't do much more than I have with with this. And what they really weren't talking about is that the face is the problem. It's the fact that it was, well, it was too shiny or it was too red or it was too this or it was too that. And so I found someone who could could do, uh, someone very close to me who was able 
to do makeup, someone who owned a makeup business and they would come along before I recorded and, and they, they would do my makeup and effectively all they do is just put foundation on just to dull the shine. Apparently I've got a big forehead. I don't know what they're talking about, but apparently I've got a big forehead. Well, I remember some days when they've done my makeup in the early days, I would look in the mirror and I would think to myself, gee, I look good. I actually look younger than what I, what, 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 I, what I really am, it felt like. Anyway, I mean, it reminded me of the old days when I just look a little, a, a little less than what I do today. And to be honest with you, it has this way of kind of, well, it builds up your confidence a bit and, and you kind of go out and you go, wow, look, look, look at this. Well, I think in some ways, so many of us, we put on makeup and sometimes we can hide the real us we can hide the, hide, hide the real us, sometimes even from ourselves, sometimes from others, and sometimes we can even think we're hiding from God in our lives. Um, you see, I think we all put on some form of makeup to cover up sometimes the pain in our life. Um, what I have discovered in talking to so many people, however, is that for so many of them, that no matter how much the game face, the mask, the makeup, whatever term you want to use for it, is that sometimes it leaves people feeling somewhat empty. I've met people who've said to me, I kind of feel like a fake. I go out into the world, I go to my job, I go hang out with friends and others, and yet there's something within me that's breaking within me. If we, if we look at the scriptures, uh, I, I have a scripture that is kind of, if I was to say my life verse or my, my, uh, the scripture that has dominated my life more than anything else, it would be from John 10.10. 10. And it says this, it says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is Jesus talking. He said, I came that they, people, would have, uh, have life and they would have it abundantly. Another translation says that they would have it to the full, to the full. That, and, and, when we, and when we study that passage of Scripture, sometimes we think, well, it's all about us having life here on earth. And that's true. That's true. But it's also about us having eternal life. That famous verse of Scripture from John 3.16 says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. And what did Jesus say? I came that we have life and have it to the, to the full, have it abundantly. And Jesus goes on and he says, you know, for God, my Father, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that whoever would believe would have eternal life, fullness, abundant life here and now. And yet for many people, that's not the case, is it, in their lives uh, for me, when I get to the end of a year or for me, when, I, when I'm approaching a, a birthday or when something significant is happening and, and sometimes I often look back over the ministry year that we've had or the, or the things that, that I've done when we've particularly maybe run a campaign to share, share the gospel on a particular theme or something. Uh, so, so often I, I, I remember that I've had these moments and and I look back and I, and I can't help but be affected by sometimes just what's achieved by P during it. Um, as I look back over the, over the past 12 months of our ministry, um, I, I, I've met countless numbers of people and I've met people who, uh, who have told me stories, uh, people who've written to me and said they found faith at a deeper level. They found God. I've had many people say to me that their marriages have been put back together again because of what we've done through the ministry. I found people who've gone through really sad and really tough divorces be able to come out the other side and say, I've been able to get on with my life because of the ministry. I've had some people say to me that they've experienced very real, both physical and emotional a healing in their lives. There are others who've actually have written to me and said to me, I'm alive when there were points when I had other plans because I listened and God used what you guys are doing, what you and the ministry are doing to touch me. And the list goes on and on as how God has affected people. Um, 
so much of it, however, um, is, is all about how we make decisions to step into our future. And whether it's a beginning of a year, whether it's a birthday, whether we are about to become a parent, we start a new job, whether we just come to a point in our lives and we think to ourselves, I don't want my life to keep going the way it is. So often how we end up determines how we begin, whatever the stage is in our life. And so, and so when I begin a new phase in my life, when I begin a new phase in the ministry, I, I can't help but think, that, that if we do this well and if we step into our lives well, whatever the next in our lives is, that it will affect our happiness, it will affect our relationships, it will affect our marriages, it will allow us to go on, it will affect our finances, it will affect the things every day within our life, it will affect the people that we love. But for us to go on, sometimes we've got to address the battles that we face the circumstances that we face. Because if we can address the battles that we face, we can overcome them. See, you can't beat something or someone if you don't know who you're fighting. You just can't. And I think there's, I think there's three battles mainly that we fight in our lives. And, and, and let me tell you what the three of them are and I'll come back and I'll talk about each of them just a little bit. I think there's the battle of what I call the pattern, the battle of the pattern. Uh, there's the battle of the past, the second one. And then finally, there's the battle of what I call the pack or the battle of what I call people. You could say either way. What do I mean by the battle of the pattern? Well, I think the battle of the pattern is the rut that we get into. It's the battle of the way we think. It says in Proverbs that as we think, so we go. It says as we think determines the happiness and the future that we have in our life as we think, as we think. So, but, but yet for so many people, they're in a, a, a way of thinking that has a devastating effect upon their life. Devastating effect upon their life. See, the way we think uh, as part of the pattern affects the way is, is our behaviour. So there's the battle of our behaviour, of how we, so our thinking is part of the pattern, our behaving there are some of us today, if we were to think about it, we are such creatures of habit, is I keep my wallet in my back pocket. When I get up in the morning, I've been thinking about it lately, I always put my left shoe on first. I don't know why I put my left shoe on first, but I do. I went for a period of time for a number of months just to see if I could break up the subconscious patterns, the patterns that I don't think in my life, but I made a decision to put my wallet in my left, po in my left pocket of my, of my pants. And it felt weird. It felt weird. I went through a period where I decided I'd put my other shoe on first. I, I, I wanted to wrestle with the question of what's subconscious within me. What are those things that I'm doing? Because you want to know something, just as, as, as silly as it is about where you keep your wallet or how you put your shoes on, you're treating yourself in the same way because as you think is affecting your behaviour. So there are many of us that are sabotaging ourselves from the fullness of life that God wants for us and we don't even know we're doing it because there's a pattern, there's a battle that's going on within us that many of us are not even aware of. The way you come home from work at the end of the day, the way you greet people in your home, the way you uh, speak with those you love, the way you work, the way you study. Think about it. What are the subconscious things that you do? There are some people who sit in front of a television set every night and if you talk to them, they will tell you, I don't want to, but they will say to you, I just find myself here because it's what I do. The battle of the pattern is so great within us that it dis destroys us from being the person that God calls us to be. So the battle of the pattern is about our thinking, it's about our behaving, and it's about our reacting, our reacting. How many of you with the people that you love in your life, it doesn't take much to set you off. It doesn't take much for you to have an argument with the people that you love, that all of a sudden they just need to say something. They just need to push an invisible button in your life and you'll feel angry. It might cause you to cry. It might cause you to feel hurt. 
that, that there are invisible things within us that distract us from being the men and the women that God calls us to be. And we live it every day. And then we read that scripture says, I can that you have life and have it to the full. And yet there are patterns within us that are destroying that, are destroying who God calls us to be. The second aspect of the, of, of the, of the battles that we face is the battle of the past, yesterday. It's the battles of hurt and failure in our life. We've all been hurt. We've all had things done to us. We've all had things said to us. There's things by the way we are born, the the level of intellect we have, the way we look when we look in the mirror. And we can be hurt by those things. We can be hurt. There are the failures in our lives, those times when we didn't live up to the person that we dreamt as a little boy and a little girl that we would be, that we fell short We fell short and our past speaks. Our past has a voice. Our past is talking to us. We can look at the way our mum, our dad loved us. We can look at the experiences we had when we were younger and they are constantly speaking and they are using the terms failure. They are saying to us, you can't. They are saying to us, others can, but you couldn't. The battle of the past we carry with us unless we do something about it. Now, I meet people from time to time who say, I never regret anything at all. And just by the sheer way that they say, I never regret the past because I can't change the past. Often I thought to myself, it really says something about the the fact that they really are not settled. They haven't dealt with their past. The third uh, battle that we face is the battle of the pack. And I've kind of touched on this. The battle of people in our lives, others. We get hurt by the things that are said to us. We get hurt by the box that people put us into. Rosemary and I lived in in another city uh, some uh, going back 40 years ago. We first got married, we lived in a... And I, I was actually, I actually was working with a group of people, and for some reason they got in the mind, they got in their mindset that I was a certain way. I'm going back right now to when I was in my early, early twenties, late teens, and I had made some mistakes in my life. I'd done, so, I'd, done I'd just done teenage things, and they kind of put me into the box of irresponsible, right? And the truth is, I was. But then three years and five years, six years later, they never let me out of the box. Just a small group of people. And 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 I remember Rosemary saying to me, we need to go to another place where people don't have you in that box. And I went to another place and I immediately stepped into leadership. I stepped into all these areas of responsibility that were never allowed to me because there was a group of people that had seen me when I was just a kid and growing and never let me be anything but that. I just said something right then that is true for so many people. There are so many people, mum and dad maybe, your brothers and sisters, people at work, family, friends who have you in a box and they speak loudly even by what they don't say and they hold us us back from experiencing life to the full. See, we have these movies that play in our mind, don't we? These movies that play in our life and speak to us privately and sometimes even powerfully, so powerfully that they hold us back. Maybe right now when circumstances jump up, you find yourself, you have an explosive temper. It doesn't take much to set you off, just one little thing and you, and you lose control. You lack control of your thoughts. You find yourself wandering off to all kinds of thoughts that are destructive to you. Uh, You're suspicious of others. You're suspicious of what people's motivation is for what they do. And you can't help it. You're just suspicious of people. You've got a delicate self-image. You don't think terribly much of yourself. You say to yourself all the time, others could, but I couldn't. Others could, but I couldn't. Uh, You never feel quite good enough. You end up being in a place where there are, you're just judgmental. You find yourself racked by worry and you don't know why you're worrying. 
You're someone who struggles with fear. You just find yourself frightened all the time. You find yourself as someone who feels like the compulsion to cheat. And you can look at all of these things and you think to yourself, where did they come from? And they raise their head above the makeup. They raise their head from behind the mask. And there are so many of us that they have us captured in our life. These beasts, which is what I call them, they're beasts of destruction. Now in the Bible, it talks about strongholds. What's a stronghold? A stronghold is something that has you captured. It's like an addiction. You just can't help it. You just can't help it. And it, hold, and it holds you down. Uh, and in, in the Bible, there's over 50 references to strongholds in the Bible. Well, I want to have a look at where strongholds come from. Because the reality is, is that some things in our life have to be broken spiritually. We can't break them ourselves. We just can't break them ourselves. Um, where do strongholds come from? Let me give you two, two thoughts. Um, in, number one is the flesh. Have a look at Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 8. And it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. We might say the flesh is our self-will. It's us being motivated. And, 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 and the flesh is in a sense sometimes weak. St. Paul says, how come I know the right thing to do and I can't do it? Have you ever known the right thing to do and you've, stopped, you've not done it? You've known what you should say and, and, and you didn't say it. You know what you should have said you did. There was something you should have done and you didn't. There was something you should have done and you did. There, 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 there's a weakness within us. And the Scriptures call this, Paul calls this the flesh. And sometimes the weakness within us dominates. We intend for good, but we fall short. The flesh. The flesh can prevent us from being all that God wants us to be. And sometimes the flesh with its weakness can grab us and dominate our lives. The second aspect, and no one likes to talk about this, particularly of, of where strongholds come from is the devil or Satan. Uh -huh. uh, the devil, Satan is a bit out of vogue right now, not popular at all. And, 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 and so people don't tend to talk about it, but the devil and evil is real. We only have to watch our news on, on, our, on our internet and on our television sets online and we can see that there is evil in the world. Evil is opposed to God. The devil is an angel who made his decision to turn against God's will and say, I want my way. The devil is opposed to you being all that God wants you to be. The devil is opposed to you having fullness of life. The devil is opposed to God. And therefore, because we are made in the image and likeness of God, the devil is opposed to you. See, no one talks about it. And the devil has the ability to mess with our lives. And so strongholds come into our lives where it's almost like things grip us. It says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Discipline yourselves, keep alert like a roaring lion. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. So what's, a, so what's a stronghold? Strongholds are habits, ways of behaving, addictions, barriers that hold us captive. They hold us captive. They hold us captive. And if you just think about your own life, I can think about mine. And I have had strongholds in my life that have taken great effort and great prayer to break in my life. Well, how do you break a stronghold? Well, let's go to, let's go to the Scriptures in, and it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, and we'll understand this. It's a bit dense, but we'll pull it apart. Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not wage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God, and we take every thought captive to obey Christ. See, we don't fight. We don't have to fight what's going inside us 
by natural means alone. We've got to do all we can. But our weapons as spiritual people, as it says here, are not that of human beings. We have different weapons, different weapons. What are some of those weapons? Uh, here's, here's, here's four. Here's four that we could use to break down areas of our life that have us captive. Before I, before I say these, can I ask you this question? Are there areas of your life, are there habits in your life, are there addictions in your life that you feel right now have you beat? Many people would say yes. As we get older, there are older people who stop and say, well, I just am who I am. This is me. It's too late to change now. And that's just not true. That is not true. And it's robbing you of life. It's robbing you of happiness. And it's robbing you of being the person that God calls you to be. What are the weapons that God has given us? Number one, God has given us prayer. What's prayer? You know, and prayer is coming before God and saying, here I am. You made me. I am limited, but you are the creator of all things. I'm in this place, but you are everywhere. You are all powerful. You, are, you know all things. You are ever present. We are not those things. We are not all powerful. We are not everywhere. We don't know all things, but God does. And prayer is where we come to God and we submit our lives to God and we say, God, by the power of your son Jesus dying on the cross, when he overcame all that separated us from you, overcome right now in my life these obstacles to truth, these obstacles to the life that's full and abundant that you want for me. Prayer is where we break strongholds over our life. There's so much more we could say. The, the second area where we could break, where we break, the second weapon that we have to break strongholds is the, is the Word of God. And by the Word of God, I don't mean the Scriptures alone. I do mean the Scriptures, but I mean the Word of God. God's Word alive in us. God's Word spoken through the Scriptures. God's sp Word spoken to us through the church, the people of God, the church that God established, that He gave authority to, that He said what you loose on earth uh, will, be, will be loosed in heaven and what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. The church has authority. The church is not just the institution. The church is the people of God and the truth given to that people. It's the Word of God. So the Scriptures, the church um, that, it, that is within us. It, it is the conviction of our heart, the, the conscience, the conscience within us of God speaking into that inner part of us. The Word of God speaks truth into the very depths of who we are. And it speaks against addiction. It speaks against those things that are said to us that are untrue. It speaks against hurt from our past and failure from our past. It speaks truth to us if we would listen to it. Uh, and uh, also, what also breaks strongholds is worship. Worship, worship. What do I mean by worship? Worship is coming before God and, and seeing God for who He is, that He is infinite, that He is beyond. Now you can stop and say, isn't prayer and worship the same? Well, sometimes prayer is bringing our need to God. Certainly worship is an aspect of prayer, but I wanted to separate it. I wanted to separate it because, because worship is that coming before God and to the acknowledgement of who specifically God is. So there are four ways. I mixed them all up in that and uh, the editors will figure out how to put it on the screen. But what the weapons God has given us are prayer, the Word of God, the church and worship. And when we come to those things, what do they expose us to? What do these weapons expose us to? They expose us to the truth that we are victors and not victims, that we are called to life to the full and abundantly. Why? Because we are daughters and sons of God and we are made for God. We are being drawn to God. And the promise of God is that not that your problems in life will disappear necessarily, but rather that I am with you, beside you, 
exactly within you, exactly wherever you are in life. And secondly, the, these weapons expose us to the power of God to overcome and to break strongholds. They, it, 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 they expose us to power, to be able to speak truth to darkness, to be able to speak truth to that which binds, to be able to speak truth to that which says you're not. And, and it speaks truth and says to us, this is your identity as a son and daughter of God. If you want to have a great next 12 months, wherever you're starting from, if you want to have a great future, you need to stand upon the Word of God. You need to stand upon the truth that is spoken to us in prayer. You need to stand upon the power of the church and all that it says. You need to stand upon and within the worship of God, allowing ourselves to be bathed in His, in His light and glorious magnificence. And God can overcome the circumstances that we face in our life. Now, in the next message, I'm going to talk practically about how do we break some of those things in our everyday life. And my prayer is that as you listen and continue to listen in this next message, that you would experience God's power, might, and then we are going to pray that God would break forth in your life exactly where you are. Loving Father, we thank You today that You're with us. We pray, Lord God, that today You would help us overcome. Why? So that we can live life to the full and life abundant. You're calling us deeply into You. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, through the power of Your Holy Spirit. Amen. In all of our lives, there's times when we need to stop, take account of our lives and we need to change. I was only just this morning praying about the fact that in some areas of my life, that's exactly what I need to do. But we're people of habit. And sometimes the habits in our lives take control of our lives and we don't even know we're doing it. Well, I've released a book called 90 Days of Renewal. 90 Days of Renewal. And this book is all about how do we change and walk in a new and different direction. And there are many of us who need to do that in our lives if we want renewal, if we want to be the brand new person that God is calling us to be. And my prayer is that this would deeply bless you in your life as you change direction, as you move in different direction. We can make decisions of the head, but then we have to make decisions of our habits along the way. And this book will help you in making those decisions. Well, as a ministry, we don't want to sell this book uh, to, to people. What we want to do is we want to make this available to as many people as possible. And so for the cost of mail and the cost of, being, of, of the printing, we make it available to people. But we also know that there are many, many people who will purchase this book and you determine how much you contribute. Because what you contribute, the extra will go to make it possible for more and more people who maybe couldn't afford it in any other way to be able to get it. You make it possible. So go to this address on the screen or go to the, the Give tab, the Give tab, and you'll find it right in there. And you determine how much you give, knowing that what you give will make it possible for even other people around the world to be able to go through these 90 days of renewal and live better and live the fullness of life that God is calling them to live. Let me pray for you. Loving God, you call us to change. Allow us to change right now exactly in the place where we are. Lord God, our habits, our ways of thinking need transformation. Help that to happen. Lord, may strongholds come down in our life. Bless people as they read this. Bless people as they give for your glory, Lord God. And may many, many people be touched by this book, 90 Days of Renewal. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. My prayer for you today is that you would really encounter God and that change would take place in this uh, time of your life, that you would become more the person that God wants you to be, that you would live life to the full. Hey, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. And don't forget, wherever you are, God is never far from you.